Chicago, you can always rely on defense. And we love defense. And the simple fact is, we like the brutality of football. We like players saying, I'm not just going to tackle that guy. I'm going to kill him. There's a part of us that's saying, hey, we got winter coming. We've got blizzards on the way. Lake Michigan is frozen solid. Well, how about we inflict a little pain on people who come here to visit? Well, Chicago was always an intimidating team. George Hallis was up there. They always came out in those black uniforms. They looked bigger, stronger, and faster than you were. No question about it. But they intimidated you. They really did. Hallis was the greatest at it. From George Hallis to Brian Urlacher, we'll break down the great Chicago Bear defenders and announce our all-time starting 11. The defense has always been expected to play well in Chicago. Obviously, the 85 Bears set a standard, but the 63 Bears defense was as, was as dominant for the, at the time. And, and, the, and the defense has since. They went to the Super Bowl three years ago, and the, and the defense carried it. I, I think the city likes it. The city expects it. Nah, so I don't think it'll ever change. story about the Chicago Bears begins with George Hallis. And a discussion of the franchise's greatest defensive players is no different. The team's founder also played defensive end. He once forced a fumble and returned it 98 yards for a touchdown. Tackle Ed Healy was part of the first player sale in NFL history when Hallis bought his rights in 1922. Healy was an all-league pick five times in his first five years in Chicago and was elected to the Pro Football Hall of Fame in 1964. Many people called Hall of Fame end Bill Hewitt the greatest two-way player in NFL history. Opponents called Hewitt something else. Bill Hewitt was a great player, really was uh, no more for his speed. In fact, uh, they used to call him Offsides Bill because he was so fast, they always thought he was offsides. But the first defensive end to gain fanfare for his pass rushing abilities was Ed Sprinkle. He had an article, I think it was in Look Magazine, the meanest man in football. Other players thought he was he bore, he was dirty player. And his trademark was the clothesline tackle, you know. Running backs would come around then, and he that's, that's been outlawed. Nicknamed the Claw, Sprinkle was more than willing to add to his intimidating reputation. Someone once asked George Blanda what he liked best about playing for the Chicago Bears, and he said, well, what I like best about playing for Chicago is that I don't have to play against Ed Sprinkle. <laughs> we were playing Green Bay, and they had a, a in from Michigan who was a very elusive end and he played offensive left end and and he had a little mustache and and Hallis says I'll give you five dollars for every hair that you pull out of this guy's mustache see and they said that I they ran a play and I come running off the field holding my hand and started counting he weighed 207 pounds now today he'd be at what would he be a safety? Yeah. You know he weighed 207 pounds, and he was this physical, you know, killer presence. Jim Smith pumps from his own five. Ed Sprinkle charges in, blocks the kick, and Chicago's Whiteken recovers in the end zone for the fourth pair tally. He was a great player, but uh, unfortunately, just didn't get the publicity that uh, should put him in the Hall of Fame. In 1955. Chicago acquired a player whose toughness and talent earn him a spot on our starting 11. Defensive end, Doug Atkins. One time I was at uh, the Hall of Fame, and I got to have lunch with a bunch of Hall of Famers. There were about eight guys at the table. They talked about one person for 45 minutes, Doug Atkins. It was amazing to me, the, the, the legends were talking about one particular legend. So he was... He was he was 
clearly a legend among legends, which is fascinating to me. At six foot eight, 275 pounds, he's the largest member of the Hall of Fame. And a whole generation of pro football players will tell you that Doug Atkins is definitely more muscle than myth. The guy was 6'8", 280 pounds of just all muscle. He could high jump seven feet. He could beat you any way he wanted to beat you. First play of the game, we had a 220-pound left tackle named Grady Alderman. He picked Alderman, picked him up off his feet and threw him right at our quarterback. Just threw him about 10 yards through the air. My first recollection of Doug Atkins was when um, we played the Bears in an exhibition game in 1965, and Skaronsky was offensive captain, and I really looked up to him. And so when he came to me before the game, he said, look, here's some things I want you to remember. Number 81 is Doug Atkins. He's 6'9", he weighs 265 pounds. He said, uh, don't cut him, and if he falls down, you help him up and say, nice play, Mr. Atkins. Well, I started to laugh, and Skaronsky said, kid, this is not a joke. And I'm not kidding you now, because if you cut him on his knees, the first thing he's going to do is kill you, and then he's going to kill me. Atkins' intimidating size and demeanor, combined with his talent and athleticism, made him one of the best defensive ends in NFL history. Atkins made the Pro Bowl eight times and was first team all NFL in 1963 when he led the Bears to the NFL championship. We had Doug Atkins, and Doug was the best football player I've ever seen. Uh, nobody could block Doug by themselves. The best defense in the league has done it again and made the Bears the world champions. Atkins was known as a free spirit. He was also known to butt heads with Bears coach George Hallis. We were breaking camp this particular night. We've been out tooting it up a little bit. I thought I'd play Coach Hallis a little music, and I turned that music up just loud as I could get it. Oh, he'd come out of there cussing, boy, oh, damn stupid hillbilly, this, that, and other. We had a big fight right in the hall there. I, th I think he'd swing at you. If you'd hit him, I think he'd swung back, because he, he was awful aggressive. And had, I'd look down the hall and see everybody's heads be peeping out. <laughs> he was probably the only guy that, that uh, had enough guts to battle George Allen's, because uh, Doug was, uh, you know, he was a tough guy. Uh, you just always felt like the best thing to do was just to say, Doug, go get the quarterback. <laughs> That's what Atkins did, leaving his mark on the game as one of the most feared and respected players in NFL history. If you wore the opposing team's uniform, you were in big, big trouble because Doug Atkins was going to get to that quarterback and was going to get to that running back. This guy is going to get down as one of the greatest defensive ends in NFL history. The legacy of Bears linemen continued in the 1970s with players like defensive end Mike Hartenstein and defensive tackle Jim Osborne. Jim Osborne, he was a great player. He could rush the passer, play the run, but not quite as spectacular maybe as a Hampton or, or a Chambers. In 1973, the Bears selected Wally Chambers with the eighth overall pick. He paid immediate dividends. Wally Chambers was probably the most athletic tackle uh, I can ever remember the Bears having. Great quickness and could dominate a game uh, by himself. In his first four seasons in Chicago, Chambers made three Pro Bowls, won the Rookie of the Year in 1973, and was named the NFL Defensive Player of the Year in 1976. And Wally Chambers, the Bears have a player who could be the premier defensive tackle in professional football. He might have been the best ever, but, but he only played four years and he got hurt. He, he, he was so long-legged they got to his knees. Chambers started only one game in 1977 before injuring his knee. Before the next season, Chicago traded Chambers to Tampa Bay for the fourth pick in the 1979 draft. With that pick, Chicago selected the next member of our starting 11. Chicago Bears first round selection. Dan Hampton, defensive tackle, Arkansas. We got Hamp, uh, you know, you knew he was going to be a great one. He'll be a Hall of Famer. Dan Hampton did not waste any time making his mark on the NFL. He started 16 games in his rookie year and made the Pro Bowl in his second. 
Dan Hampton, uh, one of the best football players I've ever seen play. Uh, just a big, physical, intimidating presence in the middle of the line who could not be blocked. At six foot five and 264 pounds, Hampton was a versatile player. He made two Pro Bowls as a defensive end and two as a defensive tackle. Nicknamed the Danimo for his aggressive play, Hampton was also known as a leader and a selfless teammate. I think the defensive players were real close to each other. I mean, a lot of my best friends are on the defensive line.